Hey guys, Lancer here. Hope everyone's doing well. Thanks again for joining me while we look into some more trash or treasure. Now, of course, this card, these cards have already gone way past their due and are probably worth far more than they were when I started doing this series, but let's get to it. So the first card is Great Whale. You can already see the massive spike that came out of it. Um, maybe I did track this card to a certain point, but if it was $15, a while back, January 25th, I probably didn't get to it. Uh, by the time I started reviewing these cards, most most cards were cheap to begin with and then got expensive while I was continuing doing my review. So the Great Whale is 5 colorless, 2 blue, summon whale for a 5-5. Five five. Yeah. When Great Whale comes into play, untap up to 7 lands. That is pretty amazing. I mean, forgetting about infinite infinite combos, if you have a way to turn this back. The fact is, there are way too many ways nowadays to get lands and creatures, mostly lands, to tap for more than one of their mana producing colors, which means that you could get a, this guy to trigger multiple times. In fact, this is even more broken than Gishath, or the one that's a 9-9 dinosaur. When you cast this creature, you untap all the lands. Because this guy literally says when it comes into play, if you blink him, you can untap all your lands. Uh, it's actually a better card. The only thing is it doesn't have anywhere to use the lands. But if you have a way to return this card back to your hand or blink it with actually quite a few ways, there's a blue card that does it for two mana, then you pretty much have infinite mana and can just spiral out of control from there while the dinosaur, even if he is pretty cool, does not have that chance. So I think this is actually a really good card. I don't know if it's... I know there are other cards similar to, to this. I know there's a Drake that's probably pretty similar to this. Uh, you probably don't have to specifically get this card. And it is expensive when the, I think the Drake is maybe 5 mana for a 5 untapped 5 lands. So you can kind of pull it off with any of those kinds of cards. But I'm just saying, a reserveless card that does this is pretty cool. Uh, whether or not they thought about all the broken ways to you know, use it uh, at that point, probably not. Next card, Liege of the Hollows from Weatherlight. Two colorless, two green for a 3-4 spirit. If Liege of Hollows... Okay, you know what? When Liege of Hollows dies, each player may pay any amount of mana. Then each player who paid mana this way puts that many 1-1 one, one green squirrel creature tokens on to the battlefield. I am sad that I only am getting to these kinds of cards. At this point, I was planning to make a squirrel deck, but I didn't realize how many squirrel cards are actually in the reserve list, some of the older ones. They're not as good, but they're still very thematic. Like, you know, they're, they're just nice. And they've got squirrels in the pictures. So it's, um, it's a cool way to look at it. This card is probably decent because if you're in green, you probably can tap more mana than most of your other opponents, unless they're in green. But it's a give and take. If you have ways to abuse this in some ways by sacrificing squirrels and, you know, going crazy like that, then you might have ways to break it. But it's it's just a decent card. Mana Web from Weatherlight. Three colorless for an artifact. Whenever a land enters... Again. Whenever a land an opponent controls is tap for mana, tap all lands that play controls that could produce any mana that land could produce. Is that... Is that really annoying? That feels really annoying. So what happens? If they tap a red source, then all lands that can produce red automatically tap. If they tap, so does that mean that they can only tap to the maximum amount of different color producing lands? Like if you have one blue, one red, one green, one white, one black, then you can tap all five of them like you normally would, but the guy that has five reds he tapped one red and all of a sudden he's tapped out. Sounds pretty annoying. I don't think I'd want to play against that. We'll have to see. Corpse Dance from Tempest. This might be a card that I've already covered, but it was very cheap a while back at $6. Jumped all the way up to $40 and now slowly coming back down, possibly. It is two colorless, one black for an instant. Buyback two. Put the top creature card from your graveyard into play that... that that creature is unaffected by summoning sickness this turn. Remove the creature at the end of turn. So for three mana, 
For five mana, you can instantly put a creature that is at the top of your graveyard into play with haste, swing it, and then you have this card in hand, then you pay another five mana and do it again. It's a bit expensive for what it does, but $37 means that people have been using it. And the fact that it's instant and you can spend three mana could still get you a huge advantage and a surprise. So it's still a pretty cool card. Nice art as well. Thawing Glaciers from Alliance, a land. When it comes to, it comes into play tapped, pay one tap. Search your library for a basic land and put it into play tap. It does not count towards your one land per turn. Limit. Shuffle your library afterwards. At the end of your at the end of turn, I assume that means the end of your turn. Like you can't do anything else. Return Thawing Glaciers to your hand. Okay, this is pretty cool. The only thing is you can't play this card back at the end of your turn because it's the end of your turn. But if you have another land, you can play two lands, return this one, and you're actually kind of like you can't tap this guy for land unless you have a way to like Urborg or something to make him tap for land. But it feels like a pretty good card, especially in white or something where you can slowly ramp. Yeah, it's, yeah that's a weird one. It is very slow, but like I said, you can't play it any other time. Next, Fastborns from Revised Edition. One green for an enchantment. You may put as many lands into play as you want each turn. Fastborn does one damage to you for every, for every land beyond the first that you played in a single turn. This card is pretty awesome early on, and later on it's not that good. It is banned in Commander, so it's... Actually, you know what? Not very useful if it's banned in Commander because that's pretty much where you'd want to put these kinds of cards. That's kind of sad, but it is also very gimmicky. Next, Forethought Amulet from Legends. Five colorless for an artifact. Pay three during your upkeep or Forethought Amulet is destroyed. If you receive more than two damage from a sorcery or instant source, that damage is reduced to two. So if you reuse, if you get ten, it's reduced to two. If you get two, it's reduced to nothing more. It's already two. Uh, it's a bit expensive to protect your face. Interesting art. Kind of creepy. Um, $32. Not much to say. It just feels expensive. Shadow, a Shallow Grave from Mirage. One colorless, one black for an instant. Put the top, cra put the top creature card from your graveyard into play as though it were just played. That creature is unaffected by summoning sickness. Remove the creature from the game at the end of... Why does it say any turn? Remove the creature from the game at end of any turn. I like the fact that they reworded this because it actually says exile it at the beginning of the next end step, which makes more sense. I'm not too sure what they mean by end of any turn when they first wrote this card. Um... This is this is even better, but the fact is you can't buy it back. It's even better than the cop stance. Yeah, it's pretty cool. The only thing is... Well, the funny thing is, this card itself does not say you can exile it. So if you have ways to bring it back to your hand or play it again with, like, Snapcaster Mage, then you're going to get pretty good value for a two-mana card. So it's pretty cool. Stone Calendar from the Dark. Five colorless artifact. Your spells cost one less to cast. Casting costs of spells cannot go below zero. That is actually all spells. That is actually all spells. So enchantments, creatures, artifacts, spell, um, everything. Everything except for lands, I think. Seems pretty decent. Seems really decent, actually. And Ghoster Dirk from Legends. He is three colorless, two white, two, two blue legend. With first strike, creatures with island walk may be blocked as if they did not have this ability. And he's a 4-4. Art looks kind of cool. This card has been pretty stagnant, except for that jump all the way to 290. I hope no one paid for that. Uh, currently, it's $28. It's terrible. Um, there is obviously no other place to get this card, but it is not good. Anyways, guys, thanks again for watching me. That'll be today's video. I might make another one on the market movers for the day. I can see them running around on the top, and there seems to be quite a few squirrel creatures in there, which I'm interested in. 
But other than that, thanks again for watching and have a good one. See ya.